You're listening to the TaxCast from the Tax Justice Network, available for download and broadcast on www.tackletaxhavens.com. This is a TaxCast special feature. About half of all world trade takes place through tax havens, losing billions in tax revenue to governments everywhere. And that's just the way the largest corporations want it. Not only is it holding back wealthy economies struggling to recover from the financial crisis, it's also stopping developing countries from improving their economies and the lives of their poorest citizens. This month, the tax cast goes to Zambia. These Zambian miners are angry, very angry. They want to be paid higher wages. And that's not all. Mining companies like the one they work for are making a fortune. That should be good news for Zambians, but it's not. Because these miners are paying more in income tax than the big mines are paying in corporation tax. You see the problem which is now going to face our government and our people. Economist Dr Matthias Mfandi at a recent conference in Zambia on mineral taxation. The economists say this is the 10th fastest growing economy. But this is the poorest country after Niger, one of the poorest countries. The social indicators in Zambia are very poor. We have to create enough capital which we can invest in public utilities and services. See the amount of wealth that Sweden and Norway have created for mining. That's where we should be going. Zambia's Centre for Trade Policy and Development has been following the tax affairs of one particular company in Zambia. Savio Mwamwa's done the sums. The company that we've been following alone, just one company, over a period of two years, we believe not less than 50 million pounds was lost by the government of Zambia, by that company avoiding to pay taxes. 50 50 million pounds. Over two years. But that is more than what the British government gave to Zambia in aid over the same period. If those estimates are correct, that means that Zambia would not be dependent on aid if it was able to collect all that tax. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Most countries, including Zambia, would not actually need aid if companies were paying the kind of taxes they ought to pay. So it's also in the best interest of European countries also and European citizens to make sure that their governments are doing everything possible they can. If Europe is serious about its rhetoric against corruption, they should fight things like tax avoidance. So it's a no-brainer, isn't it? Zambia needs to tax more fairly. The rest of the world needs to help that happen. Well, it's not quite as easy as that. Martin Hearson of ActionAid. These are mines owned by major multinational companies and they're making large amounts of money for shareholders back in wherever it is, Switzerland or the UK, because they're able to shift their profits out of Zambia and elsewhere before they get taxed, often benefiting from the secrecy of tax havens as they do it. They manage to get almost no tax bill at all in Zambia a lot of the time. And many developing countries believe it's the rich country club of the Organisation for Economic Cooperation and Development, or the OECD, that's holding back proper reform. After all, two of the world's largest hubs for tax havens are the UK and the US. African countries and other developing countries are not members of the OECD, so they don't have a voice in shaping these rules. Developed countries like UK lead in forming these rules, and these rules currently are making it easy for big companies to avoid paying tax in Zambia. So that is why one of the things we're calling for is this transparency around the way companies trade across borders and also the way companies report. We need companies to be compelled to report on an individual basis up to the detailed level, which is not the case now. Yes, you heard right. Multinational companies don't have to report their profits based on which country they made them. So they can spin the secrecy jurisdiction wheel and decide which low-tax economy they want to declare in. Developing countries are now trying to get international trade rule reform through other bodies like the African Union and the United Nations. The UN says it wants to halve world poverty by 2015. Well, it's not rocket science. Developing countries are losing about $160 billion a year in unpaid corporate taxes through a system largely facilitated by wealthy countries. So, mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the most corrupt of them all?
You've been listening to the Tax Cast from the Tax Justice Network. For more information and more tax casts, go to www.tackletaxhavens.com. We